this is Captain Chaudhary. Today I am going to speak about nine rods, nine soft hand rods. Why do we study these rods? Basically, ship may be considered as a complex construction of various things. For example, beams, girders, deck platings, hull platings. All these uh, material are made up of steel. So, considering that the ship that is made up of so much of ferromagnetic material. It is difficult to decide as to how the compass should be adjusted. The ship's steel material is divided into nine rods. These nine rods have various dimensions, for example, four and a half rathod ship in vertical dimensions. These rods, which represent the various steel material on the ship, will have one of the poles close to the compass, and other pole that is formed will be remote from the compass. So the pole which is close to the compass kind of influences the compass. So the study of induced magnetism affecting the needle becomes much simpler. Actually if you consider general or say a more important soft line rods, right? there are only a few. There are not many rods which need to be studied. For example, at least I would like to know what rod is this funnel? Such a big structure next to the compass. I would like to know what is that rod which is making a starboard side mast on the Monkey Island or just a port side mast and there is no starboard side mast. I would like to know what rod is this uh, mast which is there in the fore and aft line. The beams, the girders. If there is a pillar under the compass, what rods are these? Because these are the steel structures which definitely have at least one of the poles close to the compass. right? So if I make the drawing of the ship, say for example this way, you have uh, the monkey island and you have the funnel over here, you have center line mast, you have the beams, suppose you look at the deck, suppose this is the deck, you have the beams and you have the girders and if you talk about the monkey island, you have these beams. Suppose the ship is in northern hemisphere, there will be a blue pole that will form here. What rod is this? This is C rod. This is a center line mast with a blue pole here. This is the C rod. In fact, the blue pole that is formed behind the compass will give a coefficient called minus IB and this pole gives a coefficient called plus IB. In the northern hemisphere, the signal pours from top. So a blue pole is formed in the upper part of the soft iron. Then you might have a pillar vertically below the compass and even there in the upper part the blue will form in the northern hemisphere. Blue pole will form in the northern hemisphere. What rod is that? We will uh, study all these rods. Then you have these horizontal rods describing the horizontal soft iron of the ship. There will be poles formed on the fore and aft part of these girders and port starboard sides of these beams. right? So these are the important rods. But in order that we do not leave out any structure, there is a concept of nine rods. right? Let us see how to name these rods and let us know whether these rods are positive rods or negative rods. We are going to make nine blocks to study these nine rods. And these nine rods, when are they called positive rods? When are they called negative rods? Let's see. Four and a half rods will come in this column, a third ship rods will come in this column and vertical rods will come in this column. As I said on these rods, the blue or red poles will form. Now one of the poles will be close to the compass and other pole will be remote. The pole which is closer to the compass, right? So for example, if that pole is formed on the forward side, we say the field is on the forward of the compass. We say field is on the forward side of the compass and if the influencing pole is formed on the starboard of the compass, we say the pole is a third ship about the compass. So field being fore and aft, field being a third ship, field being vertical about the compass, we have three different rows. 
So let's draw the diagram here in these blocks. What I suggest is you make plan view of the ship. Let's draw the compass. So this is A rod, this is B rod, there will be C rod here, this is B rod, this is E rod. Here I want a rod which is fore and aft, that means horizontal fore and aft rod and I want a field that is either forward or aft of the compass. So you can have a rod like this through and through or you might have a separate rod here and a rod here. Right? We will try to see whether this particular rod is plus A or minus A. Over here, I want a thwart ship rods. I want the rods to be a thwart ship, but the field should be either forward or aft of the compass. So I could have a rod like this, a thwart ship rod, where the influencing pole is forward of the compass, or I might have a rod like this. Alternately, I might have a rod like this and a rod like this. This is called B rod. Whether it is positive or negative, we will see. Talking about the D rod, I want a rod which is fore and aft. In this column we have four and a half rods and that four and a half rod should form a pole which is a thwart ship about the compass. The influencing pole should be a thwart ship about the compass. Either you can have a rod like this or you can have a rod like this. Now here I want a rod that is a thwart ship and I want that rod to form a pole that is a thwart ship about the compass. You can have a through and through rod or you might have a piece of rod here, rod here. Like these are the beams, okay? So if you see, the beams are represented by E rod and the girders are represented by A rod. Now these rods are important. There is importance of these rods in magnetism because these rods make on the ship horizontal soft iron symmetrical about the compass. It is because of these kind of rods that we have soft iron spheres. Here I wanted to show the vertical rods but these vertical rods must form a pole forward or aft of the compass. So typically as I told you a center line mast or the funnel. You might have a rod like this where a pole is formed aft of the compass or you might have an imaginary rod which is hanging in the air. Okay. In the same elevation we will look at another diagram where you have a center line mast over here or you might have an imaginary rod which is hanging like this. So this is C rod. A, B, C, D, E. Now I will draw the F. Now you want to look at the vertical rods and you want to see the poles being formed, a thwart ship about the compass. So I think you take this elevation. Here's a propeller, here's a compass. You want to form the poles which are a thwart ship about the compass. You can have a rod like this, imaginary rod suspended in the air or you might have a physical rod like this or alternately you might have a rod like this and imaginary rod like this. Does it remind you of something? It is a mast on the monkey island. You understand? Here is the port side mast on the monkey island. Here is a mast on the starboard side on monkey island. This is the mast on the monkey island either on the port side or on the starboard side. This will give rise to coefficient IB and these two rods they give rise to the coefficient d on the ship. You will have g rod over here or how you want to look at the ship. You want to look at the fore and aft rod right? and you also want the pole to be uh, vertical about the compass. I think you have this kind of elevation. You have this kind of elevation. You might have a rod like this where one of the poles is aft one of the poles is below the compass or you might have an imaginary rod like this. Alternatively, you might have an imaginary rod like this and an actual girder like this. So that is the G rod. G rod means you have to have a fore and aft rod where the poles are formed vertical about the compass. Now you have H over here and K rod over here. For H rod, I want a thwart ship rod. The rod should be a thwart ship, right? And the field should be vertical. So I think you look at the ship like this. 
you look at the shape like this here is a compass here is a compass I want the rods to be a third shape right and the pole should be vertical about the compass I can have a rod like this or I can have a rod like this or I can have a rod like this like this one of them is positive rod other one is negative rod K rod is very important because this gives rise to there are four rods actually K E G C but K is the most important rod that will give rise to induced healing error so it's very important so you want to look at the vertical rods and the poles also should be formed vertical about the compass so probably you can look at the ship in this elevation here's a compass you have a through and through rod imaginary rod or you have a compass like this you have a rod over here a rod over here so this is k rod so typically a rod or a pillar that is vertically below the compass would give rise to induce healing now according to the columns and the rows we have made different elevations of the ship we have shown the various rods now according to uh, the columns and the rows for example columns are representing the fore and aft thwart ship and vertical rods respectively and the rows representing fore and aft thwart ship and vertical field after doing that drawing this let us now find out how to know whether a rod is positive rod or a negative rod now there is this set of letters forward starboard below i tell the students that if the pole that is formed is forward starboard or below the compass it tends to create a positive effect if the blue pole is formed forward starboard or below it gives a positive coefficient if a blue pole forms forward of the magnetic compass for example if there is a center line mast over here it will give rise to plus ib or if the blue pole forms aft of the compass because it is not forward of the compass it will give rise to minus ib same way uh, looking at this diagram over here right here is a port side mast and here is starboard side mast if a blue pole is formed on the starboard of the compass it will give rise to plus ic if the blue pole is formed on the port side of the compass it will give rise to minus ic okay so please remember fsb we are going to use fsb in a different way now look at this rod which is horizontal soft iron there is this influencing pole over here and this is the remote pole not influencing the influencing pole is forward of the compass so i will mark a plus here and the other pole is further forward of the compass further forward of the compass so i will call that also plus whereas in case of this rod the influencing pole is aft of the compass so i'll mark minus here and another remote pole of this rod is further aft so i will mark that also minus because this is plus plus this is plus a rod because this is minus minus both minus so it is also plus a rod whereas here the through and through rod one pole is aft other pole is forward right so this rod is naturally a minus a rod if you have a through and through rod it is always a negative rod for example here also you have one through and through rod so this is minus e rod here also you have a through and through rod so that is minus k rod okay through and through rods are always negative let's look at this rod b let's look at this rod which is a thwart ship and whose one of the poles that is the influencing pole is fore and aft about the compass so the influencing pole is forward of the compass so plus the other pole is further to starboard of the compass that is also plus whereas if you talk about this rod right the influencing pole is aft of the compass so minus and the other pole is further to the port not starboard so that is also minus a set of minus minus plus plus will give positive rod so this is plus b rod right this is plus b rod and look at this the influencing pole over here is forward of the compass so plus further to port not starboard not starboard to the port so this is minus this one is aft of the compass so minus influencing pole is aft so minus remote pole is further to starboard so it is plus so minus plus combination will give you minus rod so this is minus b rod 
look at this now this rod looks like a funnel on the ship the influencing pole is aft of the compass not forward so this is negative and the other pole remote pole is further below further below so that is a positive sign there so this is a minus c rod so what happens here the influencing pole forward so it is plus further up not below so minus so both these rods are minus rods look at this rod this particular pole that is influencing pole is aft of the compass so therefore minus here and the other one remote pole is further up not below that is also minus this particular pole that is influencing pole is forward so plus and the other pole further below so that is also plus so this is plus c rod let's look at the d rod influencing pole on the starboard side so plus further forward plus starboard side forward and in case of this rod the influencing pole to the port minus further off again minus so this is plus d rod minus minus and plus plus uh, let's look at this particular rod the influencing pole on the starboard side so plus further aft not forward so minus same way this will be minus and further forward means plus so this is minus d rod let's look at the e rod as i said through and through rod is always negative let's look at these rods what about this particular beam half beam the influencing pole is on the starboard side so plus further to the starboard so plus let's look at some other rods here is this athwart ship rod right and the influencing pole is below forward starboard below so this is plus this is further to starboard so this is also plus this is a plus rod and let's look at this rod influencing pole is below so plus further to port minus so this is minus h rod let us look at this pillar which is vertically below the compass the influencing pole is below and the remote pole is further below so that is also plus 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 makes this rod as plus k rod so this is how you find out how the rods can become positive or negative